I build a huge microphone. Just kidding. This little guy here was actually 3D printed using 3D scanning data off of my smartphone. The video tutorial for that, you find it in the description down below. But this level of quality isn't just simply exporting your data and printing it. There is a lot of post-processing involved into this. In this video, I want to explain you all the post-processing, the flattening, repairing textures and everything you need to get from hobby quality to professional quality. The first program we're going to use is Blender. Under File Import, you can import a wide variety of 3D files. For this tutorial, I exported my 3D scanning files as an OBJ with a .mtl file as a texture map. After import, you will see that the file displays no texture. Don't panic. 42 is the answer. In that case, that means that we simply have to change the render view of our window to display the textures. You find that on the top right corner by clicking the ball symbol. There it is. As you see, the surface quality isn't all that good. It's noisy and bumpy. First order of business is to correct his posture. We can't have him slack away like that. To do that, simply click on your model. With the buttons on your num block 1, 3, 7 and 9, you can look at your model from different perspectives. If you don't have a numpad on your PC, get one. I mean, come on, what are you doing? Now with the highlighted model, you can press R to rotate and G to grab it and move it around. Move and rotate your model to the center of your working window. By the way, you orbit your camera by pressing down on the mouse wheel and you can move your camera by holding shift and pressing your mouse wheel down. I like to zoom in on the feet and make sure his posture is upright as he would stand in real life. Because then the figurine will stand by itself later. What you will see when you try to spin him around his own axis is that the origin of the part is outside of the model. To fix that, simply right click and choose set origin to geometry. You can also choose center of mass here. This sets the origin inside of the model and it spins around his own axis. Now I scale him to his appropriate size. Even when she told you it's not small, it is. Important that as under scene units, the unit system is metric. No freedom units here. And length is set to adaptive. Now choose the axis you think is the height of your model and type the size you want in here. Type the unit with it. The adaptiveness of your unit system now sets it correctly. Your model is now scaled in one axis. Copy that scale factor into all other axes. If you are smarter than me, what isn't a big accomplishment to be honest, <laughs> you realize that I scaled the wrong axis here. The height would of course be your biggest axis. For now, we will hide our textures because we want to work on the surface and the mesh only. So click the little white ball with the rich family. Now with the shadows, you can really see the bumpiness of your 3D file. As soon as we start working on our mesh, we will lose all the textures, but that's okay. We will bring it back later. It is important that we duplicate our model for exactly that reason. After we did that, we are not allowed to change position or rotation of the model anymore. To duplicate, simply press Ctrl D and then hit Escape. Now up here in the content browser, you have the same data set twice. I like to lock the scale and rotation of both models so I don't accidentally change them. I also move the second model into its own collections to differentiate the models from each other. Right click new collection and simply drag and drop it. Now I hide the original in my viewport. What I was too dumb to film apparently, it's the little eye symbol. Before we start to work on the mesh, there is one more thing we need to do. Your mesh will have holes and the triangles are all over the place. And maybe you even have way too much of them. Blender likes to work with squares instead of triangles. So we need to remesh. The easiest way to do that and keep all the details is to simply use the feature remesh. It also closes all the holes in the data, big or small. So for that, simply go to the wrench. In the program, you idiots! You first activate it, set it to smooth. It will look horrific. Set the scale to 0.9 
and then play around with octane depth till you're happy. Again, my frame was off, but you can see it here. If you use this little arrow up here and check statistics, you can see how many phases your model will have after applying the modifier. Aim for around those numbers. When you are happy, if you're happy and you know it, press apply. Don't worry if your computer freezes for a few minutes. It takes a lot of processing power. So let's start the real work. Thanks to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. You wonder why a cat tells you about a company that produces PCBs? That's because PCBWay offers way more services than just PCB manufacturing. They offer extended capabilities in 3D manufacturing such as 3D printing, CNC milling and also electronics assembly. Simply choose your design, upload it to their website and you will get an instant quotation. Pay your order using those weird human paper slip thingies and a few days later you receive your parts with worldwide shipping. With this service, we were finally able to get our perfect getaway vehicle and finally pull it off. Woohoo! Click on Sculpting on the top menu. The tool here used the most is the one on the top left. By holding down Shift, this tool smooths the surface. On the top, you can adjust the radius and the strength of the brush. Start out with big flat surfaces and smooth them. Best practice is to follow the flow of your model you're working on. In that case, that means the flow of the fabric down the body and all the anatomical features. When it comes to features you want to keep, just release Shift and press Ctrl. The brush will actually pull on the model and create an extrusion. I always do that first and then smoothen it down till I'm happy with how it sticks out. Making the brush smaller helps too. If you press F, you can change the radius of the brush with your mouse. If you want to accentuate a region that goes in instead of out, simply don't hold any button and use the brush as it pushes the surface in. Using those tools, smoothen and sharpen your 3D model to your liking. Especially when you want to 3D print it later, it's good to overdo some of the folds, etc. of your clothing. This will give your model the details needed and add areas where light catches and throws shadows. Especially in areas where one piece of clothing goes into another one. The second tool on the left is the tool that pulls harder and creates a sharp edge instead of a round bead. I like to use it for folds in clothing or sharpen transitions like the edge of clothing. If you're not sure where a certain detail on the model is because it was not captured on your 3D data, simply activate the original model again and switch on textures with the ball on the top right. It overlays both datasets and you can now follow the textures. Make sure that your working model is highlighted. You can now mark the position with a sculpting brush from the textures and then continue on with your modeling. Let's use this and continue to improve our model. Sometimes you have features that are not supposed to be there. It's a little tedious to remove them, but I will show you how. By the way, I'm not that good with Blender. If you know a better way, please let me know and all the others in the comments down below. So, switch to edit mode. Mark the area you want to cut and delete it. Now use the marking tool again and mark the edges of the hole you just created. Be careful to only mark this area, not other areas of the model. Here you can simply color in the triangles. With shift you add something to the chosen ones. We are the chosen ones. And with control you subtract them. I found out it's easiest to mark all and then change the view angle and demark everything you don't want to mark. When you're happy, simply press Alt F to use the fill holes command. Sometimes you have to redo it a few times to get it right. You can also remesh again to fill the holes. So let's continue with the cleanup. Mm-hmm. 
The area where you should really take your time and if you print in color really accentuate is the face. The face is the hardest to do since our brain is trained to see if something is off. In 3D scans the eyes and nose are normally really flattened. Go in there and give it back his 3D. Also if there is a beard in the scan you have to add some volume to it. That is why the upper lip looks like he was a little cheeky to the wrong guy. The same goes for the hair. Add volume since hair tend to flatten and give it more volume by adding material. Then look for big packs of hair and how they flow and don't go into too much detail like small strains of hair. You don't need that, the texture will take care of that. I always try to follow the natural flow of the anatomical lines. Also, I switch on textures in between to see where, for example, the eyelids are or facial hair. If the face looks weird to you, even if it's your own, that's quite normal. You're just ugly. Uh, I mean, a face without color always looks weird. Here's an example of me without texture. Because this video was getting super long, I decided to split it in two. So in the next part, you will actually learn how to repair textures and how to put color on your model again. So if you only followed this tutorial to print your figurine, for example, in FDM, you're finished here. Otherwise, watch the second part.